Hi, I'm Destiny, a software engineer with six plus years of experience that for some reason you people decided to start watching, and I think you should kill web frameworks. Web frameworks. Love them or hate them, they have become a staple of the modern web. Everything from YouTube, Facebook, to Discord. The user-facing backbone that makes our experiences across the web more interactive and polished than ever before. But I'm here to tell you, your personal site, your company's site, and your favorite local coffee shop down the street doesn't need their site to use these bulky and clunky frameworks, and it would be better without. To start with, what the hell is a web framework? Web frameworks are used to support the creation of a website, typically being the foundation of what makes your website operate when it comes to the end user. They're usually used to help developers make their website more responsive, interactive, allow code reusability, and overall are praised by the developer community. These are complex projects that solve complex problems in the modern web. Let's take a step back though. I want to be upfront about my motivations here. I don't think web frameworks are inherently bad. I even worked on multiple production Angular applications over the years. They serve a use and are widely used by major tech companies across the globe to make their money printers work. But for what you're working on, these solutions are problems you don't have. It is making your development time slower, your deployment costs more to build and run, and ends up becoming a development hellscape of your own creation. Watch my previous video on dependencies for more about that. The problems that people are trying to solve with these frameworks are far-reaching, complex, and nuanced. I believe you. You want your application to be responsive, interactive, and built in a way that makes it easy to maintain. All things that web frameworks tell you they solve. I'm not dismissing your problems, but I'm here to tell you that there are better tools for the job. You don't need a framework, you need a library. I'm getting ahead of myself though. Why are we even here? Years of experience. I built Angular applications in production for years, and it is a tool I would consider I am fluent in, regardless of how much I don't enjoy it. We use it to build rich, interactive, real-time experiences. We maintain about six core GitHub repositories, each responsible for a different application, with five of them being Angular applications and one of them being our backend. I'll be honest with you, 95% of our site consisted of forms and searchable tables. I wish I could say I was exaggerating, but not only was I the lead developer on the real-time portions of our front end, I personally drove major parts in the rest of our applications and it was just forms and tables. Over and over and over again. There are better tools for the job, and today we're going to be looking at one of them. A common thing you want to be able to do in a web page is that when you click or change something, you want the site to update or change. This is the 95% I was talking about for those Angular applications. A navigation bar is common across almost every site, and we'll be using that today as an example. Currently, when you click on one of these links, it looks like it scrambles the page. It might be fast, but it's painfully obvious to the person looking at your site that it's just loaded the whole page again. Let's take this and add a bit of spice. Now, my personal blog is really simple, and it's built with a minimum amount of dependencies in mind. We're not going to break that. We are adding only one dependency today, for a total of one JavaScript dependency on my whole website. I'll make sure it still works without JavaScript too. This magical dependency is htmx. It's not a complicated or large library, and its main idea is to put the ht in HTTP and HTML. A library built around the idea of making the hypertext protocol a fully fleshed out hypertext experience. Don't worry if you don't know what a hypertext is or what htmx is. It's really simple, and I'll show you the magic of how it works. To start with, let's look at what currently generates the navigation bar on my site. Ultra pitchforks and torches, the code won't do you any harm, and I promise it won't bite. I can walk you through it though. What we have here is two REST functions that generate HTML. It uses a lovely library called mod to do this. For the navigation bar, we have the logo and then we have our four navigation elements. The comparisons done here are to make sure the link of the page we are on is highlighted since that looks nice. What we want to do is take this navigation and make it cleaner because right now when we click on any of these links, the whole page reloads. Now we can introduce HTMX into the mix. The idea I have in mind to solve this is that I want to update the navigation bar to keep the highlighting of the current page, and of course, I'd like to make sure the page contents still update to the new contents. This is going to take a bit of work and changes in the server, but we'll keep our focus on the navigation bar for now. This is a bit more complicated, but once we're done here, you'll know most of what you need to know about HTMX and can go on to build rich and interactive experiences. Like before, we are largely doing the same thing, but we've added some attributes to our HTML that start with Ajax. These tell HTMX some things about our HTML. Now stick with me for a minute, I'm about to teach you most of HTMX in the next 30 seconds. HTMX by default will inherit attributes from parents. HX target is used to tell HTMX we want to do the action on the element with an ID of page, which is where our page content is. HX swap tells HTMX how we want to update the target. HX get is used to define the link we want HTMX to grab when we're doing our requests. HX replace URL is used to tell HTMX we want to update the user's address bar like our link was previously doing. HX swap OOB indicates to HTMX that whenever this HTML is part of a response to HTMX, that it'll target the element with the same ID if they can find it on the page. It's a lot to keep track of, but you've just learned a huge part of everything you need to know about HTMX. 
Let's look at this from the big picture. What we have here is a function that takes in the current place we are on a website, creates an element that can replace itself, and it has four navigation links that without JavaScript will reload the page to update the contents, and with JavaScript will update our page nicely. Either way, this will update the address the user is at, so if they refresh the page, it'll still be in the right spot. If we take this and use it, we probably get the navigation we had before, but when we do this, the page just shows up within the page. We need to make sure our server understands the difference between a normal and an HTMX request. This is where the HX request header comes into play. The HX request header is added to any HTMX request and allows us to respond differently when we know it has a hold on things. We can check for this header pretty easily. Here we're going through all the headers that are part of a request and checking if any of them are HX request. This gives us a rule where if it's true, we can change our behavior to send only the content of the page that makes sense to send when HTMX is requesting it. We can then pass is HTMX down to where the final rendering of the page is done to change its behavior. We even get to see that navigation function from earlier again. So when we are responding to an HTMX request, what we do is only include the page content and the updated navigation, keeping in mind earlier that when we include the navigation in an HTMX request, it replaces the existing navigation. We still get an extremely snappy experience, and it acts like a single page application now when we're clicking between the navigation bar links. If I apply the same concept to a couple of other places where links are used in my site, I upgraded my site while still having the option for it to work without JavaScript. This is all that most sites need to do what they do, and it's extremely simple. This only adds a single dependency to the client side, and it isn't required for my site to work. You could maybe call that a feature. It did cost some development time though, but it only took about an hour, and I was writing this video and explaining it while doing it. For the cost of a single client-side dependency that is optional, and a little bit of work, I can now create an extremely rich and interactive site. Expanding on this idea, HTMX allows you to trigger these kinds of behavior in a lot of ways, like hovering an element, key presses in a former input field every few seconds, on load, adding delays and debouncing, and much, much more. Even as things such as handling loading indicators and working with confirmation dialogs. Everything you'd need to build a modern, extremely interactive, and lightweight site. I didn't need to use a huge web framework to get the details I actually wanted. You don't need complex tools like web frameworks to solve simple problems. You need simple and defined tools that do exactly what you need and nothing more. This is extremely simple to extend as well. I don't need to keep it in mind when I'm developing new features as this is an opt-in process. I can still develop my site like I used to and then come back and do a round of polish with HTMX. The set of tools I've collected here from my application are a great fit for what I'm building without leaving the comfort of my Rust backend to do it. You don't need to separate backend and frontend developers when it can be this easy to build your site. As I mentioned before, when I was working with Angular, we had six repositories, five of them being Angular and one of them being our backend. It would have been so much easier to be able to tightly integrate our backend and frontend as we commonly need the backend to handle any actions whatsoever anyways. With a library like HTMX under our tool belt, we could have replaced all the code and effort needed to tie an Angular application to a JSON API in order to generate HTML and just gave you the HTML in the first place. We're trying to build things, so why are we making it complicated with web frameworks? Thanks for watching this video, and thank you for everyone that watched my previous video on why I started ditching dependencies. It was far and beyond my expectations what all of you were able to do, and I'm very grateful to everyone who decided to listen to me blabber. I really do appreciate your support and would ask that if you did enjoy this video, please let me know by liking or subscribing, and let me know what your thoughts are on this approach to development in the comments down below. Thank you again. Roll the fuck ups! Web frameworks are used to support the creation of a website, typically being the foundation of what makes your website operate when it- Oh, I can't touch the microphone and move it when I'm doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> That's not the line. What we have- What we have- What we have here- Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. No, I've I've upgraded. <laughs>